By 2050, sea levels along much of the U.S. coastline are expected to rise by at least a foot and are on track to rise to an average of six feet by 2100. This spells trouble for the nearly 40% of the U.S. population that live near the coasts, especially those who live in New York City. This is what the city could look like if water levels rose by three feet, six feet, nine feet, and 15 feet. By the six foot mark, the sea could swallow 20,000 acres of land, including 52 subway stations and 18 power plants. These projections spurred the city into action. New York has a plan to protect itself from rising seas, but is it enough? On October 29th, 2012, Hurricane Sandy hit New York City hard. Over the next 48 hours, two million people lost power and 44 lives were lost. Then, almost a decade later, Hurricane Ida and ensuing flash floods dumped a record-breaking 10 inches of rain on the city in September alone. And the situation is only projected to get worse. New York City's geography makes it particularly at risk to the impacts of climate change. A substantial portion of its lands are low-lying, some even built on landfill. One of the first problems the city has is it has 600 miles of coastline, and so it is very vulnerable to sea level rise and to any impacts that would be coastal in particular. So the city has been investing in critical infrastructure projects to make it more resilient against future storms. Projects like the $1.45 billion East Side Coastal Resiliency Plan. Kicked off in the fall of 2020, the project aims to protect the city's most vulnerable stretch of land, Lower Manhattan. First, by raising the East River Park by eight to 10 feet, and second, by installing a 2.4 mile flood protection system made up of barriers like flood walls and floodgates along the East River. The neighborhood that this project is adjacent to is over 110,000 uh, vulnerable New Yorkers. Um, and so it's critical that we start to uh, really prepare the city and prepare these neighborhoods for increased coastal storms, sea level rise, um, and all of the other impacts of climate change. It's set to finish in 2026. Climate change is a, it's a new thing that we're all facing together as a community and the more people can kind of step back a little bit and recognize that these are the big kind of hard moves that we're gonna have to make in the coming decades. Then there's Hunters Point South Park in Long Island City, which sits on a former industrial site. Hunters Point South is a great example of kind of how you can integrate resilience into a fantastic park space really well. Completed in 2018, the park features rain gardens, salt marshes, and a lawn that can hold 550,000 gallons of stormwater runoff. So there are features that are just built in across the park that intermingle with nature and that, are, that you can use on a sunny day for recreation, but then they have that stormwater or storm surge purpose. Not only does Hunters Point South Park shore up Long Island City against the effects of extreme weather, some features actually mitigate climate change. We've got grass, we've got trees, we've got the, the salt marsh. Those have a, a carbon capture ability and, and salt marshes in particular are actually better than forests at capturing carbon. Resiliency efforts like these haven't stopped at parks. Other neighborhoods have added flood protection methods to existing infrastructure like in southern Brooklyn's Canarsie, which was hit especially hard by Hurricane Sandy. Over here, most of us, our basements was full. I couldn't get into my garage because everything had tumbled over, but the people on the other side, like say 105, those people, their basements was five and six feet of water, okay? We had three and a half feet over here. I stayed on top of it. I went to meetings after meetings, and I was working. I used to leave my job and go to different meetings, parks department meetings, DEP, DEC. I didn't know nothing about this engineering stuff that they was talking about. But because I wanted to know what we could do for Canarsie, okay, my community, I was there. 
tireless efforts by the community didn't go unnoticed. And in October 2021, the state invested $14 million into the Fresh Creek Coastal Protection Project. Canarsie's Fresh Creek dumps water into the sewage system in the event of storms or high tides. This, combined with the overflow coming from the creek itself, results in even more flooding. So the restoration project aims to build tide chambers that would block seawater, trash, and debris from entering the existing sewer lines. The purpose of it is to maintain and uh, control the flow if any high tide event, you know, in the case of Hurricane Sandy, Ida, whatnot, we want to make sure that the water is entering the storm sewer system in a steady and a controlled manner. The infrastructure investments that we're making here prevent the kinds of infrastructure failures that we've seen from these floods like Sandy, these storms like Ida just last year. And so it will protect Canarsie from flooding and for decades into the future will keep Canarsie resilient. The project is scheduled to wrap up in fall 2022. But these projects might just be the start. So a lot of what we have done is first fought the last war, which was Hurricane Sandy, and we're prepared for the next one. But it's hard to tell where the next threat will be coming from. If climate change doesn't slow, New York City will need to build mega projects, like the New York Harbor Storm Surge Barrier, a $119 billion six-mile seawall proposed by the Army Corps of Engineers. It will use retractable gates to protect people, properties, and landmarks from storm surges without cutting off the city from the waterfront. Even so, many environmental experts are concerned with the seawall. They say that the barrier addresses only storm surges and not other climate-related threats, like flooding from high tides and storm runoff. It could also trap sewage and toxins detrimental to the city's waterways. In order for the Army Corps to get the go-ahead, New York City, New York State, and New Jersey would all have to approve construction and foot 35% of the bill. While these plans and proposals aim to fight off rising sea levels and intensifying storms, their biggest focus should be on protecting the nearly 8.5 million people that make up one of the world's major cities. The environmental conditions that New York City faces are all solvable by the application of technology to the problem. It's a question of whether we're willing to invest. We have to got to start thinking a little bit ahead of the game and prevent the problems from happening. So uh, New York City is going to be around. Uh, and uh, if it starts to sink, we'll figure out a way to pump it up, guaranteed.